Hi everybody, it's the Soap Man and it's time to make our second batch of soap for the week. I'm testing another new fragrance and when I test new fragrances I like to use my tall skinny mold because it's a smaller batch and I also get a different looking soap and I get to practice the piping. But what we're using today is Bramble Berries Cucumber Melon, what is it? Cucumber Melon Candle and Soap fragrance. This I believe was developed for candles but that somebody discovered that it works really well in soap and it gets a lot of good reviews. It does smell good. So I'm going to try to replicate or represent I should say um, a honeydew melon and for that I'm using Nurture Soaps Sea Green. Now this is not really the color of a honeydew melon but it's the closest that I have that I can use. It's just the closest I can get. And well, let's face it, it's not supposed to look just like it anyway. And I'm also going to have a cantaloupe. So this is going to be Nurture Soap's Orange Vibrance for the flesh inside. And for the outside rind or the peel of the cantaloupe, I'm gonna have just plain uncolored batter. So those two colors plus the uncolored using the cucumber melon uh, fragrance. Let's get started making some soap. For the piping on the top, the cucumber, I'm going to use a Bramble Berries Chrome Oxide Green and I'm going to add just a little splash of black in it to darken it just a little bit to look like the cucumber peel and I'm going to use some titanium dioxide and have a two-tone frosting to represent the cucumber which will be the piping on the top. So here we go. I'm soaping about 85 degrees, which is pretty common because that's a good temperature for this recipe. So here we slowly and carefully pour our lye water solution into our oils. as usual bring this to the most basic emulsification I think I can get by with which is literally like 10 seconds tops I mean that's it but I will stick blend a good bit more when I put the colors in which will fully emulsify it and probably stick blend a little bit when I put the fragrance in if it behaves well. So this is for our frosting. Just eyeballing about half. And put it out of the way. And this will be our three primary colors in our soap. And once again, close is good enough. Just eyeballing it. I am going to just drop swirl these in. I may add a hanger tool. I'm not sure. I'm just going to play it by ear and see what happens at the time. But I have the hanger tool ready if I decide to add it. So that one will be uncolored. Here is our sea green. Probably put maybe a half a teaspoon because I want this kind of light. It's going to represent the honeydew as closely as possible. of the orange vibrance because it does lighten up a little bit when the soap goes through saponification. It doesn't hold real bright. I sometimes add another neon to it, but I don't want it really darkened, so I'm going to do it just like it is. Let's 
stir these in, see what they look like. Okay, that's about what I expected. So is that. Now that looks really nice now, but this does seem to fade a little when the soap goes through saponification. Okay, so let's put our fragrance in. Once again, I've done my homework. I know I can safely use this entire bottle, so I'm going to put about a fourth in each. Save that for our frosting. Maybe just a splash more. That's for our frosting. And stir it first to see how it behaves. And no ricing. It's not accelerating. Good. Good, good, good. Quick hit with the stick blender to really emulsify it and thicken this up just a little bit because I like my drop swirls to be just a tad on the thick side. Everything is well emulsified and well mixed in. Let's get this into the mold. And it's behaving very well so far. So I'm happy with that. So we'll start. Let's start with the green. Let's do the uncolored as a middle pull. Nice and fluid. So because of that, and it's behaving well, I'm going to go low and slow.
So, as you can see, this behaves extremely well. I mean, it's still fluid, still very fluid. Okay, look at that. Still very, very fluid. I'm not even going to attempt to mix the soap frosting, so that's going to have to sit quite a while, so I will be back.
All right, we're back to cut our soap, and wow, that fragrance behaves well. When I shut you down, I had to wait almost a half an hour before this was solid enough that I dare attempted to mix up the frosting. So meanwhile, I have soap batter here setting for a half an hour. I stirred it periodically. And finally, after about a half hour, this was solid enough I was confident, so I mixed up the soap frosting and had to stick blend the daylights out of it with the fragrance in it before it finally started to get to a consistency that I was comfortable piping. And then the piping consistency was perfect. It was just perfect. So this went really well. So let's see what the inside looks like. But yeah, if you need a fragrance that gives you a lot of time to pour, that is definitely one of them. It's a little bit soft, but it's hard enough to cut. Oh, yeah, very nice. Very nice. Nice cantaloupe and nice honeydew, and that's the uncolored, which represents the cantaloupe peel. Very nice. And the two-tone frosting on top went really well to represent the cucumber, the peel, and the white flesh inside. Well, I am really happy. So yeah, when you have a fragrance that behaves well and will give you the time to pour on a drop pour like that, low and slow is the way to go. So yeah, I am really happy with both of these this week. So as long as the fragrances hold up, these will be five star reviews. Here's the crisp cotton I did earlier this week. And here is the cucumber and melon. Really pleased with these. That's what I have this week. So thank y'all for watching. Stay safe. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you next week for some more cold process soap. Bye, everybody.